that for fiscal year 2012, the town's distribution allotment for Chapter 90 has gone up from 609,000 or at $609,498 up to 783,973. Um, and in the capital budget, it it lists uh, Chapter 90 income as $500,000 a year, and it's projected out through 2017 as still only $500,000 a year. Um, and additionally. Residents are kicking in 350,000. Wait, wait, how does that relate to this budget? Uh, essentially, residents are paying more, an extra $800,000 for road work, because you're taking the money for easements out of Chapter 90 funds and not giving town meeting any discretion over how those funds are used. Instead, we have to kick in more money an additional 400,000 after the override. So you, you're essentially usurping the, the authority of town meeting to control finances by calling it chapter, a chapter 90 expense and not as a general um, road expense. So that's my issue. So both the capital budget underestimates the amount of money coming from chapter 90. It's incorrect. You, you, they can't hear you, but in, should that not have been raised under the capital budgets or under the budget for um, public works? Um, well, there's very little description of any of these line items, and that, that's why I started out asking you, okay, what budget is the easements come under? Oh, I do didn't you have know. A, a specific question you want to address? Um, or are you just making a statement? <laughs> I'm making a statement that the capital budgeting and projections are off by almost $300,000 a year, and two, the authority of the town meeting to control spending has been usurped by uh, the administration by claiming it's state funding for this, but public, but town funding for that. So that's my statement. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Does anyone else wish to speak to community? Planning a community development budget. Seeing none, okay, that ends that budget. Number 15, someone put a hold on redevelopment board. Who wished to speak to that? Mr. Jamison. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I have a question. Um, one of the line items refers to Gibbs expenses. Did we have a resolution whether that's under the ARB or the town manager's uh, purview for managing the Gibbs? I know we had a handout on our sheet from Mr. Um, Chapdelaine, but uh, is that a done issue? Um, if we, does it matter where, how, how we vote this, um, the outcome, should it be under the ARB or the town manager's purview, how we vote this? Mr. Chapdelaine, can you answer this question? Article 27 is still uh, postponed. It hasn't been acted upon yet, but the appropriation of these funds would not uh, not be impacted. Th these funds would be expent whether through the ARB or the town manager when that is resolved. So th there's no, th there's, there's. So if we vote this, this appropriation, it's spent on the Gibbs regardless of uh, which body is managing so, it. So if it ends up being the town manager who's in control, which is what your handout uh, posits, um, we're appropriating funds into the ARB. How do you get the funds to put into the Gibbs? It's practically managed by the Planning and Community Development Office. So that's under your purview. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this budget? Redevelopment Board? Seeing none. Next budget was put on hold, Public Works. Who wants to speak to Public Works? Mr. Trembley. Hey, Trembley, Precinct 19. Mr. Moderator, I have my annual question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how much salt did we use? Mr. Rademacher? <laughs> Mike Rademacher, Public Works Director. Uh, this past year, we purchased 4,193 tons of salts at a cost of $269,877. Well, it's a lot less than the 11,000 tons we used a few years ago, but still kind of a lot given how much snow we uh, 
Uh, there, were, there were not a lot of snowstorms. There were a lot of storms that required us to treat the roads, uh, and we were able to fight uh, the storms that we did get you know, with the salting um, trucks rather than calling contractors. And, and um, do you think that, uh, for instance, I saw in the uh, capital budget, and I don't know, maybe it's in here somewhere too, you, you got some new sander bodies coming? Do you think uh, if we got metering devices on the uh, sander bodies, we might be able to cut that down some? Uh, I do. Um, metering devices, uh, for folks who don't know, are, is equipment which you can install on a sanding truck that will control the amount of salt distributed and can be programmed to put down a certain amount of salt per, per lane mile, and it's something that we're investigating to better control the, uh, the application of salt. So that they, it would pay, the device would pay for itself? And it's quite possible that the, that the savings in salt would pay for the device, yes. And, and you'll look into that? Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Mr. Lavretti? Oh, James. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Lavretti, Precinct 7. Um, just to follow up on that last question, I heard Mr. Rademacher say how much we spent on salt this year. Um, is that the same amount? Did, was all the salt used that we bought? Mr. Rademacher? Uh, we have two salt sheds, a large and a small. We have a small salt shed which uh, does have material in it. I mean, do you have a sense of um, what fraction of the purchase remains? It's about, uh, I, was, I would say it's about one-tenth of the amount. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess my other question, Mr. Moderator, is more generally, uh, how much did the town spend on snow and ice removal this year and how much was budgeted? Mike Rademacher, Public Works. Our budget this year was 577779 and we spent 507000 I'm sorry, how much? 507 Wow. Well, I'm, I'm really surprised. A few years ago, we were budgeting, I think, on the order of three to 400000 This past winter was extremely mild, and we're using up almost the entire snow and ice budget for the such a modest winter. The years where we budgeted 300 or so thousand, we typically went over by a million dollars or so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> Mr. Jamison. Uh, Gordon Jamison, uh, Precinct 12. Um, to follow up quickly on the snow and ice, if you turn to uh, the next page in from the very back of your FinCom, and you look over to the lower right, which is a sort of a total summation of the uh, expenditures for the year, you'll notice there's a zero there next to snow and ice deficit. I've been in town meeting now 12 years. That's usually 600 to $1.2 million. So uh, we owe Mother Nature a rousing uh, applause. <laughs> Mr. Toski, I know, is very happy when it doesn't snow. Um, so my questions. Uh, <coughs> I totaled $1.25 million in the uh, roadway reconstructions from a mixture of the stated amount in the, in the uh, capital plan, the extra 400000 we voted as part of the override, and a standard amount that I forget what the number was, but that added up to one25 a million. I was interested in the, uh, the difference that the gentleman spoke to a previous budget regarding the 200,000 or so that he saw in Chapter 90. Um, is the difference there, perhaps Mr. Rodemaker, uh, through the monitor, um, <laughs> moderator could help us, is that difference related to the fact that the increases happened recently and Chapter 90 funds are reimbursement in nature? Mr. Rodemaker, can you answer that question? Yes, Mike Rademacher for Public Works. Uh, we do not know the amount of Chapter 90 when the budget comes out, so 500000 is put in as a placeholder for, for the use of those expenditures. So do we need to reconsider that budget and add the rest of it in? It was not my impression that we had to. Mr. Chapelain? Because the more is the better if the state's given it to us. Adam Chapelain, Town Manager. Chapter 90 is uh, spent not subject to appropriation. 
And, and as Mr. Rademacher just stated, it's, it, historically the Chapter 90 amount had been approximately 500,000 and had been reported in the capital budget. Starting last year, the legislature increased that amount. This year they've uh, planned to increase that amount, but that bill's yet to be released by the legislature. So we, we have a projected amount, but still don't actually know what the Chapter 90 amount for the next uh, for so FY13 would be. So in that particular item, when we vote the capital plan that includes that, that's uh, our vote is t technically for that line item is immaterial and it could be increased and the total could be increased. In, in term, chapter 90 can be spent to the amount that is issued to each town, so, so correct. My question is really that we vote to expend a certain amount of funds from grants and other sources and when there's a number to that and it's a, got a bottom line number and this would increase it by several hundred thousand. Are we doing something wrong by not voting the full amount? No, I, I believe the language of the vote allows the town manager to accept other grants and expend them as they become okay. available. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Mr. Klein. And just a quick question, uh, Section G under street lighting, traffic signals, and fire alarms, where there's a, uh, a reduction of 20 plus percent in both maintenance and electricity. I'm just curious how much of that is due to the town's adoption of LED lighting. Mr. Chapdelaine is going to tell us. <coughs> Reductions you see there are almost entirely due to the LED lighting. Uh, both maintenance and electricity. The maintenance is uh, due to the fact that the one-third of the town that's been changed over uh, has a seven-year warranty. Uh, so if there's any failure of the light, uh, that warranty covers both install as well as the fixture itself. So maintenance costs will be reduced. And the electricity usage of the LED fixtures is about a 50% reduction from the high-pressure sodium lights that were, uh, were installed. So given the lights that have been installed and the lights that will be installed going forward through the funding that was approved in the capital budget, uh, that's an estimated reduction in electricity usage for the next year. Tremendous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slickman. Paul Slickman, Precinct 9, motion to terminate debate under this budget item. All in favor? Yes. Oh, all in favor of terminating debate on this budget, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Okay, it's not a two third vote. Mr. Warden? Uh, John Warden, Precinct 8. Um, uh, since we're speaking about uh, lights, I, a question I've often raised in this hall, particularly when I was, had the honor to sit where you sit, Mr. Moderator, I often wonder if we're saving some electricity by not turning them all on. There's one, two, three, four of these bulbs, or these uh, light fixtures don't have bulbs in them, apparently, or have burned out bulbs. What do you think? Can we save some electricity in the hall? Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Uh, I, I guess the best, the best answer I can give is I know we, we, um, we're currently looking at having some electrical work done uh, in, in terms of all the light fixtures here. So I, I, I can't say for certain, but I think some of these fixtures might have an electrical problem and we are working to remedy that. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this budget? Budget 17. Seeing none. Next budget to put on hold was community safety. Who wish to speak to that? Mr. Weddle. Okay, Mr. Chaffin. Uh, Bruce Weldell, Precinct 12. Um, I'm looking at um, the Green Book, Appendix B, page B9, the sub B police services uh, detail of personnel services uh, for, the, for the police department. Um, in addition to the, um, the ranking officers and patrolmen, uh, there are a number of um, part-time positions, park and control officers, three uh, part-time, um, and uh, detention attendant. And in my particular interest here is uh, the animal uh, control officer. Um, uh, Mr. Moderator, I think my question is probably appropriately directed uh, to Chief Ryan. I've, um, I've lived in Arlington for 41 years, been a town meeting member off and on uh, for almost that period of time. And I have a, um, a somewhat ill-kept uh, garage archive of finance committee reports uh, from uh, various years when I was a town meeting member. And um, each year, of course, the uh, police department budget has historically uh, called for a full-time uh, 
dog officer, more recently called an animal control officer. Uh, and my search of the garage archive showed that in 1970 and 71, uh, in addition to the full-time uh, dog officer, at that point there was one part-time animal control officer, 1976 and 77, in addition to the full-time uh, officer, three part-time animal control officers. 1985 and 86, uh, one part-time animal control officer. 1987 and 88, uh, two part-time. 1989, 90, 1991, 1992, 1993, uh, one part-time. Uh, it's not scientific, but that's what I found in a, in a quick look. Uh, town meeting has had uh, off-leash dog issues before it for at least the past four years uh, with uh, organized group proponents regularly uh, asserting a need. Uh, last year, uh, town meeting increased fines for violations of the leash laws to amounts ranging between $75 for a first offense to $200 for fourth and subsequent offenses with strong support from the selectmen and the police chief. You may recall uh, that those of you who have been here the past four years, uh, that um, leaders of the uh, organized dog group opposed the article uh, to raise these fines, uh, whereas in 2009 and 2010, uh, and an abortive proposal uh, this year, uh, there were, there were uh, 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 proposals brought forward uh, to increase the opportunity for off-leash uh, dog activity. Uh, in 2009, this was the subject of an organized uh, so-called pilot program, which uh, narrowly failed. Um, and uh, the, the others have been brought forward by uh, uh, 10 uh, voter uh, articles. My, my question for the chief in view of, of ongoing problems in certain parks, particularly on weekends when the full-time officer is typically not on duty, uh, my, my question, Chief Ryan, is, is there a need for the restoration of at least one part-time animal control officer to take care of some of these problems? Chief Ryan, what's your opinion on that? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <coughs> Short answer is yes. Um, however, we're committed to uh, building a budget that meets the uh, policy of our honorable board of selectmen at, at achieving a budget that's no more than 3.5% increase mm -hmm. over the five, six year fiscal plan. And when building a budget, you have to set priorities. And um, adding a part-time animal control officer is, is, while it would be great to have, it's not a high priority. And we've been able to augment uh, non-traditional enforcement hours with overtime. But we are committed to uh, supporting the Honorable Board of Selectmen in their, in their mm -hmm. five-year financial plan. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, with your permission, I guess a brief follow-up. Um, in, in view of that, uh, I suppose I'd be interested in whether the, um, the manager, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, uh, sees an opportunity to work with the Board of Selectmen uh, to help resolve uh, some aspects of this problem in the coming year uh, with an eye toward next year's budget. Mr. Chapdelaine. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Um, I think Chief Ryan uh, stated it very, uh, very well in regards to the 3.5% spending caps that the budgets are put together uh, based upon the long-term financial plan of the town. However, every year when we put together the budgets, we do look at what priorities are for that year, what certain service needs or levels might be. Um, so I'm certainly willing to give it uh, further consideration as budgets are planned in future years. But given um, uh, other priorities within community safety and within other departments, I certainly couldn't commit to, um, to increasing funding levels for that service. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you both. Thank you. Mr. Chaput.
Uh, Roland Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Roland Chapman, Precinct 12. I have a question on page B9, the next to the last line on that page is called accreditation stipend. I guess my question probably should go to the police chief because I noticed that only in the last couple of years has this expenditure shown up. I'm assuming that this was what we used to call a Quinn bill. And perhaps there's some explanation, but it doesn't look like there was any money spent and all of a sudden we have spent a certain money. I have nothing against the program, by the way. I'm just curious about how, how it was accounted for that way. Mr. Ryan, what's that? No, that um, I'm proud to tell you that um, uh, for the first time about four years ago, the Arlington Police Department became accredited uh, pursuant to the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Program. And as part of that um, uh, project, a lot of additional duties were placed on ranking officers to, to achieve and maintain police accreditation. And that was a, um, a very small stipend uh, negotiated to each officer uh, who uh, works on that project. Um, okay. it, it has nothing to do with the Quinn Bill. So we, d we don't really participate anymore in the Quinn Bill activity, or what? Uh, we do. Um, and uh, that's, that's been collectively bargained with both, both bargaining units. We, okay. do, we do participate in the Quinn we, yes, we do. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think Thank it's a good program. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Returning to an old tradition, I'd like to speak to both of the chiefs through the moderator about the overtime budgets in their departments. What specific um, question do you have? The specific question I have is that I see that recently the police overtime budget, for example, has taken a fairly large jump. Mm 